Welcome back to part 3 of this motion graphics project. It's time to start adding some optical effects to sweeten the comp. We'll begin by creating this light flare element. I'll start a new comp, add a solid white background, and set the size to 2000 pixels wide and 500 high. I'll add an elliptical mask and shrink the height and width down to 0.022. I'll also set the soft edge to 0.01. This little white dot will act as kind of a light source. I'll turn off the checkered underlay for clarity. I'll add a highlight node to give me that starburst effect. The first thing I notice is that when I'm dragging a slider in the control panel it looks one way and when I release the mouse button it suddenly looks different. This is pretty common in Fusion and the solution is to toggle off the auto proxy button at the bottom. Now Fusion will display the full resolution image even when I'm dragging a slider. This node creates a 4 point star by default but I'll drop the number of points from 4 down to 2. The values I've chosen are 0 0.993 for the length 0.5 for the low threshold, and 2.35 for the curve. And that's the horizontal part taken care of. For the vertical star points, I'll simply add a transform node to the flow, set the angle to 90 degrees, and then scale it down. There's a checkbox labeled Use Size and Aspect, and if I uncheck that, I'll have independent X and Y scale controls, so that I can scale down the X value to 0.1. Now that I have both a horizontal flare and a vertical flare, I'll merge them to produce a four point star. I'll soften the edges with a blur node set to 4.0. And finally, I'll add a soft glow node with a glow size of 25 to give it a soft halo. And that's it. Notice that if I turn the checkered underlay back on, you can see that it's mostly transparent. This will make it easy to merge on top of the main comp. I'll just group all the nodes and name them Flare. We'll be using this Flare five times in our comp. Two Flares to write on the text, two more to wipe between the diamonds, and one in a fixed position to highlight the final diamond. I'll copy and paste the flare group into my main comp and merge it on top of everything else. I'll drag it left completely out of frame and at frame 0 keyframe it there. On frame 10 I'll move it so that you can just see a hint of it on the left of the frame. It's going to stay there waiting in the wings until frame 30, so I'll set a keyframe on frame 30 also. Finally, I'll jump to frame 60 and drag it just to the right of the number 2. Now, we want the flare to fade out just as it reaches its destination, and I'll use the blend parameter on the merge node to do that. To keep things simple, I'll make this flare and all the others fade out over 10 frames. In other words, I'll keyframe the blend to 0 on frame 60 and 100% on frame 50. I'll jump into the spline editor and refine the displacement curve which controls the position. I definitely want it to ease into the final destination and I'll adjust the other handles to suit. The blend curve isn't so important. Now I'll play that back and it should sweep across and fade out by frame 60. This flare will write on the text so let's animate the text now. I'll scrub to the frame where the text should start to appear. For me that's around frame 32. I'll select the text node, find the write on parameter, drag the end slider all the way to the left and keyframe it there. I'll scrub forward to where the flare reaches the end of the text, around frame 47, and drag the end slider to the right. And now when I scrub, it looks as though the flare is writing on the text. By the way, I just broke my promise about only keyframing on multiples of 10, which is a clear breach of contract and you should probably demand your money back. Before I play that back, I'll add another flare to complement the first one. But this one will be rotated by 90 degrees. I'll deselect all my nodes, create a new transform node, Connect the flare group to that, and then merge it over the top of everything else. Now if I look at the result, you can see I have two flares in the image, and I didn't even need to duplicate my flare group to do it. On the transform node, I'll set the angle to 90 degrees, and I'll also scale down the X size so that it fits inside the frame. 
To animate the position of this flare, I'll switch back to the Merge node, just to be consistent with the other flares. On frame 20, I'll keyframe it at the default position, right in the centre. And on frame 60, I'll drag it to its final destination, which is the same as the last flare. And just like the last flare, I'll keyframe the opacity so that it fades in over 10 frames and fades out over 10 frames. I'll also pop over to the spline editor and make sure that it eases into the final position. I'll play that back and you can see that the two flares are converging on the same spot. And I'll save my project before we start on the diamond wipes. Now I'll add a couple more flares to accentuate the wipes between the different diamonds. The first wipe is from frame 50 to 70. Unlike the last flare, I don't need to rotate this, so I'll simply merge the flare group on top of my last merge node. I'll keyframe it above the diamond on frame 50, and below it on frame 70. I also want it to fade in and out, like the others, so I'll keyframe the blend control on the merge node, just like last time. I'll play back frames 50 to 100, and it looks okay, but I notice that the fade in and fade out make it a bit weak, as it's only completely opaque for one frame, that is frame 60. It can be tempting to start adding additional keyframes to refine this, but instead, I'll just change the shape of the animation curve in the spline editor. It will still fade in and out, but we'll spend more time at higher opacity values. I'll play that back, and it's only a subtle change, but it looks a bit stronger now. The next wipe is exactly the same, but 20 frames later, so instead of keyframing it again, I can duplicate the last merge node with copy and paste, and that will automatically duplicate my animation curves for that node as well. I'll connect the flare group to my duplicate, view the result, and use the timeline editor to offset the new motion by 20 frames. I'll drag a marquee around the keyframes to select them, and drag them to the right. When I play that back, I now have two flares to match the diamond wipes. The fifth and final flare is the only one that doesn't even move. I'll merge the flare group yet again, and position this one in the center of the diamond. I'll keyframe the blend parameter to zero on frame 70, 100% on frame 90, and then back down to zero on frame 150. Now, when I play that back, it doesn't look much like an optical effect, because the size and shape stay exactly the same. It's much more gradual than the others, so it's easy to spot how unconvincing it looks. To see some really nice professional optical effects, you could try pulling apart the lens flare templates which come bundled with Fusion. But for now, I'm just going to keyframe the size of the final flare, so that it looks a bit more like a light fading out. I'm also going to refine the shape of the curves a bit, mainly because I've had way too much coffee and can't leave well enough alone. And that's it for all the flares. We shall bid them flare well and move on to tackle the final element in this project. To wrap up this project, we'll add one last sweetener. We'll create a diagonal grid pattern and then use that to drive a displace node. This will produce a sort of refraction effect, which is in keeping with the other optical effects. For the grid pattern, I'll start with the background node on its own and set the mode to gradient. Gradients in Fusion are very versatile and well worth getting familiar with. I'll set the end x value to 0.04 so that the gradient is really narrow, then turn on repeat so that I get multiple copies. I'll turn these into vertical lines by dragging the gradient markers to around the center position. And in the image tab, I'll change the height to 1280 so that we get a square image. I can turn this into a grid if I overlay some horizontal lines, so to create those, I'll simply add a transform node and set the angle to 90 degrees. Now I'll merge the vertical and horizontal lines, and set the merge mode to multiply. 
I'll group all three nodes together and name them grid. If I rotate the grid by 45 degrees using another transform node, then I have my diagonal pattern. Now I'll return to the main comp. The refraction effect happens near the start, so I'll jump to one of the early frames. With the last merge node selected, I'll add a displace node and take a look. I can't see anything yet because it requires another input to drive the displacement, so I'll connect my pattern to the green foreground knot on the displace node. Now I can see something happening, so I'll select the displace node and in the viewer I'll drag the manipulator to the right so that it's centered on the diamond. This means that the displacement effect will radiate out from that point, which should look more balanced. I'll also crank up the refraction strength to 0.3 so that it's more obvious. There's still a bit of a problem, which is that my grid pattern has been a bit squashed, and the little diamonds are now a greater width than height. This can happen quite often in Fusion when you're combining different aspect ratios. If I mouse over my pattern node, a pop-up tells me that's 1280 by 1280, whereas the displacement node is 1280 by 720. There are many different ways of solving this issue. In this case, I'll just crop my pattern by inserting a crop node in between the pattern and the displace node. If I take a look at the cropped image, I notice a couple of things. By default, it has been cropped to the project's default format of 1280 by 720, which is perfect. But it's cropped only the top of my pattern, so I'll drag the Y offset slider to roughly center my pattern in the frame. Now I'll take a look at the displace node again, and finally I have the look I'm after. It's covering the entire frame though, so I'll mask that off. Be sure to select the displace node before you add the rectangular mask. I'll position that on the right side of the image using the guidelines. Now I'll add a second mask which I'll animate wiping down the frame. I'll leave the height at the default value, but I'll make it wide enough to fit the entire frame. And I'll set the paint mode to multiply so that I get the intersection of the two masks. On frame 20, I'll keyframe it above the frame. And on frame 50, I'll drag it below the frame. Now I'll play back those frames and you can see it sweep downwards. And that's the end of the entire project. If you want to render out the result, be sure to set the frame range to the entire 150 frames and add a saver node to the end of your comp. Let's take a look at the final result one more time. Thanks for watching and congratulations on making it all the way to the end. I hope you've had a good fusion workout.